Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I said in the last lecture, we will now, uh, after having stated the um, central limit theorem, talk to you about its importance. We will actually see, now once I prove the theorem and then I give you applications, you will see uh, how important the theorem is and how widely used and, uh, it, the theorem is. Okay. So, uh, as we said that the central limit theorem says that, if you have the sequence of uh, uh, identically independently distributed random variables with mean and variance finite, uh, then we say that the sum of these random variables x 1 plus x 2 plus x n, uh, which, which it will have mean n mu and variance n sigma square. So, this will give, go to, this will converge to n 0 1 as n goes to infinity. That means, the distribution, no matter what the original distribution of uh, the x i uh, uh, was. Now, when you uh, take the sum and you uh, let n go to infinity, then uh, this random variable will converge to the standard normal variate. So, this is a convergence in distribution, right. Or in other words, as we uh, can state it in another way also, this is for any a, which is from minus infinity to infinity, a finite number, then the probability of this number being less than or equal to this random variable, less than or equal to a, will converge to the uh, standard normal. That means, this is your f z a, right, and this is your f z n a. So, this converges to this as n goes to infinity. So, in distribution, the convergence is there, right. Now, um, in order to prove this, I need to use this lemma, uh, which uh, talks about uniqueness of the MGF, and I will not give a proof for to this. For this, we will just uh, accept the uh, lemma as it is. So, this says that if z 1, z 2, z n again is a sequence of random variables, having distribution functions f z n and m g f m z n, right, and greater than or equal to 1. So, um, the distribution function is f z n and the m g f of uh, z n would be m z n and greater than or equal to 1. Let z be a random variable having f z as its distribution function and m z at its m g f. Right? So, then we if, if m z n t converges to m z t, that means as n goes to infinity, as n goes to infinity, this moment generating function converges to the moment generating function of the variate z. Then, we say that the uh, corresponding distribution functions will also converge to the uh, distribution function of z. That means, if so, this is this talks about the uniqueness of the m g f. That means, if the m g f s if the m g f s m z and t converge to m z t for the var variate z, the m g f of z is m z t as n goes to infinity, then the corresponding distribution function of z n, which is f z n t will converge to the distribution function of z for at all points t at which f z t is continuous, which means that it is defined. right? So, this is the idea. That means, the uh, m g f s uniquely and while um, discussing m g f s, I also tried to tell you that uh, you know uh, m g f s uniquely uh, give you your uh, density function or the distribution function, because the parameters you can compute and uh, actually uh, not only the parameters, but the distributions are uh, is the same. I mean once you get a m g f, you can uniquely fix the distribution right from the uh, form of the uh, m g f function. So, this is what we are stating here, which we have also been using otherwise. So, now uh, let us, uh, so the proof is not very uh, difficult, it is straightforward. So, I am just uh, rewriting this function, this random variable. So, I, mu is getting uh, attaching to each of the x i's. So, therefore, uh, the same thing can. So, now I am writing the m g f of the random variable, which we want to show. Uh, will converge to a standard normal variate in distribution. So, uh, this can be an at, a, at a point t, I am defining the m g f. So, this is in fact e raise to this whole thing uh, into t. Right. The m g f of this would be e raise to uh, whatever you want to call it, 
y n or something or z n, then uh, e raise to z n t. So, the m g f expected value of e raise to z n t you can say, right, which I can write as uh, x 1 minus mu upon sigma root n plus x 2 minus mu and so on. Now, since x 1, x 2, x n are identically distributed and independent uh, uh, random variables. So, the m g f here again by the property of the m g f. Um, well, okay. the thing is that yes, I should have uh, okay. So, yes, uh, the order has been a little, because I will be talking of uh, the m g f s of the um, uh, independent random variables, uh, you know more than one variable. Uh, so, that should have come, the lecture should have come um, before that. Okay, anyway, we can uh, uh, talk about it. So, what I am saying here is that this m g f um, can be written as the product of the m g f of x 1 minus mu upon sigma root n raised to n, because of the independence. This anyway also follows from independence, because you see when you write this, uh, let me say I am saying z 1 plus z n and you are taking t. So, when you write expectation of this, right, because the um, p d f s are, so this will be z 1 into f z n, because the joint density function would be this. right? Um, so, your expectation when you write of this would be uh, whatever you can, an nth order integral from minus infinity to infinity, depending on um, if the variates are defined. I am taking the general definition into d z 1 d z n. right? So, then you see you can separate out the integrals. And so, each integral will be the m g f of these and since they are identical, it will be the same, right. Uh, I am writing f z 1, f z n, but they are all the same f z 1, f z 1. So, therefore, uh, you can immediately see from here that this will be uh, that uh, this m g f can be written as this, because of independence and identically distributed random variables. Now, this I can um, uh, write as okay, this should have been at t m g f at t, right. And so, uh, let me just separate out this. So, this will be uh, m g f of x 1 minus mu and I am taking the variate to be t upon root n sigma. So, this raised to n. Now, um, you expand this. Yeah, Remember, this is um, when you are writing this. So, I am just expanding my t x and this will be uh, this will be expectation of 1 plus t x plus t x whole square by factorial 2 and so on. Right, the expansion of e raise to t x. So, that is what I am doing and then I am taking expectation inside, because yeah. Okay, so, now here um, in the central limit theorem, uh, when I assume that they have finite uh, variance. Yeah, so, I would, another assumption I should have made is that, because I am using the m g f way of, uh, I am using the moment generating functions to prove the theorem. I should have also said here that um, uh, m g f x i exist. Okay. And so, obviously, we will be talking about uh, all those t's at which the m g f exist, right, at which the m g f is defined. So, uh, therefore, um, yeah, I take this expectation since the m g f exists. So, I can take the expectation inside, because the series is a convergent series and so I can take the expectation inside. So, this is what you have raised to n and you see here, um, uh, I am not considering higher powers of t, because see this is square then it will be t cube t 4 and so on. So, I am just writing this whole as a you know higher terms, higher order terms of t powers of t. Right? So, then um, see expectation of x 1 minus mu is 0 because we have taken assume that each x i has mean mu. So, this term is 0 and therefore, you will be left with uh, this thing. So, and expectation of x 1 minus mu whole square would be sigma square. So, this is 1 plus sigma square t upon uh, uh, should be t square t square uh, and sigma square. Uh, there, there should have been a t 2 also uh, sorry. Uh, this will be 2 factorial and so on. So, therefore, there will be a 2 here, right, because t x square upon 2 factorial and so on, right, right. and then higher terms, higher order terms of t, right, this raised to n. Now, uh, <coughs> so as, 
n goes to infinity, you see because uh, n raised to half is in the <coughs> denominator. So, then when you say take the third power, it will be n raised to 3 by 2 and so on. So, uh, these things will go to 0 as n goes to infinity. So, but here, um, so I will ignore this and then you see what happens to this 1 plus sigma square. Um, so, the sigma square cancels out t square by 2 n. Right. And so, if you write this as t square by 2 into n and then raise to n. So, uh, I hope uh, uh, you know that most of you that this will converge to e raise to t square by 2, yeah, because n in the denominator and then n power. So, as n goes to infinity, um, I can safely ignore these terms. So, then this will be this will converge to e raise to t square by 2, because sigma square sigma square cancel out and this you are left with t square by 2 into 1 upon n raise to n. So, this converges to t square by 2 as n goes to infinity. right? And you know that this is the m g f m g f of a, a random variate, which is normal 0 1. Right. And so, we have shown that um, using the lemma, because I have shown that the m g f of uh, this random variable sigma x i minus n mu upon root n sigma that uh, converges to the m g f of a standard normal variate. Therefore, by the lemma I can assume that uh, this random variable converges to uh, n 0 1 in distribution as n goes to infinity. So, you know using the uh, m g f the proof really simplifies and um, so, in the proof I have used the expression uh, small o of t upon root n sigma. So, the understanding is that this denotes terms of the type uh, t upon root n sigma raised to r, r greater than or equal to 3. See, in that proof uh, for proving the central limit theorem, I, I wrote down the terms up to t square and then I wrote down that uh, the later terms will all be having higher power of t upon root n sigma. So, this is the expression and see the understanding is that as n goes to infinity, uh, this is for uh, this expression. That means, because r is greater than or equal to 3. So, anyway this will go to 0. Uh, so, that means, as n becomes larger and larger, uh, the, the terms that uh, become very small. So, their contribution is negligible. Therefore, we ignore them. Right? This is the idea. But now, uh, for convenience, uh, I have uh, expressed, I have used this term for uh, this notation for also in, uh, including the term uh, expectation of x i minus mu raise to r. So, that means, I am taking that uh, this now denotes for me in that proof, uh, this into t upon root n sigma raise to r for r greater than or equal to 3. Okay. But then, since we have assumed that the m g f exists for all x i, x i are all identically distributed. So, um, the m g f exist that means, all moments exist. So, all moments are finite and therefore, these numbers are finite for all r. Hence, uh, the same thing applies that means, if this becomes small, then as la n becomes larger and larger, this whole thing also becomes very small and goes to 0. Right. So, this is the idea that um, as n goes to infinity, this will go to 0. So, therefore, we can neglect the term. So, this is and I have used this expression elsewhere also and so this is the understanding is that when you write small o, then it means that um, these are higher order terms, whatever you have written down beyond that all higher, higher order terms that means of power higher than uh, higher than 2 here and for us the way I am using it are greater than or equal to 3. So, therefore, for large n I can ignore uh, such terms in my sum. This version of C L T um, as central limit theorem goes under the name of Lindbergh Levy theorem also. Uh, Lindbergh in 1922 and Levy in 1925 independently gave this theorem. They showed the, they proved this result. So, uh, independent of each other in three years gap. They, so, therefore, this is also sometimes known as the Lindbergh Levy theorem, but uh, most commonly it is referred to as the central limit theorem. So, the proof is simple just using the independence identically distributed random variables and the properties of the m g f. So, through the property of m g f, we could show that uh, this sum of the random variables, which are independent identically distributed random variables will uh, minus n mu upon root n sigma converges to a standard normal variant. 
So, now let us look at this interesting example. This is from Dodevich and Mishra and I will give you the references uh, at the end of the course. So, a casino has a coin and the wishes to so you know remember a casino is a uh, uh, people bet and uh, so, um, uh, the game is you know tossing a coin to show a head. So, a casino has a coin and wishes to estimate p, the probability of a head on any toss in such a way that they can, uh, they can be 90 per 5 percent confident that the estimate p hat is within 0 0.02 of p. Okay. So, obviously, they want to have an idea as to how, uh, what is the probability that the coin will throw, uh, show a head when it is tossed. It is important to them, because every, uh, whenever a head is tossed, then uh, you know the person who is playing the game wins. So, the casino has to pay. So, therefore, um, they want to be confident, uh, that the whatever their estimate uh, is, that is within 0 0.02 of uh, p, uh, the actual p. Right. And so, uh, weak law of large numbers helps you out here. Uh, so, given an epsilon and a delta greater than 0, we know that there exists an n naught, uh, the smallest value of n, such that for all n greater than or equal to n naught, probability of x n bar minus p greater than or equal to delta is less than epsilon. Right. So, for all n greater than or equal to n naught, this difference is greater than or equal to delta is less than epsilon. right? And so, the complementary uh, the, uh, the event would be that probability x n bar minus p in absolute value is less than delta. So, this probability is greater than or equal to 1 minus epsilon. So, uh, the casino for the casino problem uh, your delta is 0 0.02. So, that your x n bar is within uh, 0 0.02 of p. right? So, it can be either a little less than uh, p with uh, p, p minus, that means it can be uh, p minus 0 0.02 and p plus 0 0.02. So, this is what you want. So, your um, x n bar should be in this interval. So, um, so delta is 0 0.02 and your 1 minus epsilon is 0 0.95. So, this probability that your x n bar is within is in this interval uh, should be uh, the probability should be greater than or equal to 1 minus epsilon. So, that means, you will be 95 percent confident, this is the idea. So, therefore, um, uh, you just write out this, uh, okay, this is exactly what, uh, yeah. So, once you uh, give the values of delta and um, epsilon, you get that probability x n naught minus p in absolute value should be less than 0 0.02. So, this probability should be greater than or equal to 0.95. Uh, okay, this I do not need to write this because now I am using the value n naught. Okay. And so, when you uh, expand this x 1 plus x 2 plus x n naught upon n naught minus p. So, this should be less than 0 0.02 is greater than or equal to 0 0.95. So, this will, uh, so therefore, you can find such an n naught and therefore, um, the casino can uh, by tossing the coin that many times, they can find out the, uh, so, uh, the, uh, the estimate p hat for the uh, probability of p. The same event can be rewritten as, um, okay, this has to be or it was not really necessary, because since we have said that there is an n, n naught which will do the job. So, therefore, I could have carried it as n only and then uh, found it out, but anyway. So, therefore, um, this is therefore, this everything is n naught here. right? So, now, uh, I have this event and if I divide all the uh, numbers by uh, uh, under root n naught p q, because uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, variance of each x i is uh, p q and therefore, variance of x 1 plus x 2 plus x n naught will be uh, n naught p q and so divide by the standard deviation and then therefore, uh, th this event is the same as this. So, the probabilities are the same. Right, 0 0.02 n naught divided by under root of n naught p q. So, I divide throughout by under root n naught p q to uh, you know standardize and therefore, uh, this I am, this is my random variate now, which is the standardized uh, variate and by C L T theorem, uh, this is a standard normal variate approximately of course, right. Approximately, this is standard normal variate. 
and uh, so probability is a function. Now, this probability would come out to be a function of because your uh, numbers on the two end are the, the interval in which you are wanting z to be that probability will depend on p. Now, the thing is that you are um, uh, see if I find, um, so here again you have to do n naught n naught. So, the whole idea is that if I put this equal to, um, if I put the um, maximum value of uh, n naught p q here, then I will get the, um, because it is the denominator, if I put the maximum value, then this will be the smallest. So, if uh, that means, this interval will be the smallest for the maximum value of this number, it will be the smallest interval. And so, probability of the smaller interval, if this is greater than 0.95, then for um, any other p, this uh, probability would be greater than 0 0.95, that is the idea. So, my event, what I am doing here is, by writing the maximum value for this, uh, the, this event will be subset of all other events, whatever the value of p, because q is 1 minus p. right? So, therefore, if this probability can be made to be uh, equal to 0 0.95 or uh, greater than or equal to 0 0.95, then um, uh, for, all, uh, for all values of p, this will be greater than or equal to 0 0.95, this is the idea. right? So, therefore, uh, the and we know that uh, the maximum n p q is 1 by 4, for all uh, 0 less than p less than 1, we know this. Okay. I am sorry, why am I writing this p q. So, maximum value of p q is 1 by 4, and therefore, uh, the required probability, since uh, by the CLT theorem, this is standard normal. So, this will be, uh, okay, now that we have started doing it. So, I will write <laughs> not everywhere. So, this will be uh, phi of, which is the, um, for the cumulative uh, probability, this is a point zero 0.04. So, if I am writing 1 by 4 now, so this will be 1 by 2, and so you take it uh, here, and therefore, the point zero 0.04 and not minus um, phi of minus point zero 0.04 and not, right, from here, right. which by symmetry of the normal standard normal variate, uh, this is 1 minus of this phi point zero 0.04 um, under root n naught minus 1 minus this. So, this becomes twice phi 0 0.04 root n minus 1. And now, we want this to be greater than or equal to 0 0.95. And so, when I compute the value of n for um, by putting it equal to 0 0.95, then um, again uh, for all values of n greater than or equal to n naught, this inequality will be satisfied. Right. Okay. So, the normal tables give me that. So, therefore, this probability becomes 1 plus 0.95 divided by 2. So, now the normal tables tell me that uh, corresponding to this value 0.975, that means the area under the normal curve is 0 0.975, that the corresponding value is equal to 1.96. So, that means 0 0.04 under root n naught is equal to 1.96. So, from the normal tables corresponding to this probability, I get that this number must correspond to 1.96, and therefore, your root n naught is equal to this, which is 49, and therefore, your n naught greater than or equal to 49 square. So, that means, uh, for that many uh, sample values or that many trials, you have. So, th this will, uh, with this, this, that, that, this number n naught, which is greater than or equal to 49 square, uh, your um, estimate of um, um, estimate of p, which will be obtained by p hat. So, that means, p hat will be uh, essentially your. Uh, so, what we are saying is p hat is summation or you can say x uh, 4 9 square bar. So, this estimate of your uh, p will be within 0 0.02 of your original p with probability 0.95. Okay. So, this is uh, you know uh, interesting application of your central limit theorem, and um, because we could uh, reduce the whole thing to computing a standard normal probability, we uh, got the answer here. Right? Now, again I um, will just try to have a variety of uh, uh, examples to show you use of uh, the central limit theorem. So, now here another question that is asked is, 
if suppose you have x 1, x 2, x n again a sequence of identi identical independent distributed random variables and uh, these are Bernoulli random variables, right. Probability x i equal to 1 is p and probability x i equal to 0 is 1 minus p for all i and again p is unknown, right. So, you uh, want to estimate this probability and as I told you that of course, uh, the weak law of large numbers uh, tells you that uh, x bar will x n bar will be a good estimate provided n is large enough right so now let us see if you put so now let's define s n as x1 plus x2 plus x n and let us fix t so here in this example i'm trying to show you the you know the accuracy of the central limit theorem and obviously we expect a better answer from the central limit theorem then if I just use the Chebyshev inequality. So, this is the whole idea uh, uh, you know by doing you know wanting to do this exercise and so here let us see that um, um, yeah. So, the question is using Chebyshev's inequality how large an n will guarantee uh, that this S n S n which is the sum of these uh, random variables x 1 to x n. So, this divided by n minus p in absolute value is greater than or equal to t is. So, you have fixed the t. You have, so, given a t then you want this probability to be less than or equal to 0 0.01 right. And we will uh, now here compare uh, because how large an n. So, uh, Chebyshev's inequality will also give me the answer, uh, give me a value of n and then central limit theorem will also uh, give me a value of n. So, we will compare the two values, right. So, here um, um, expected s n upon n is p and variance s n upon n is p into 1 minus p by n, right, because they are independent random variables identical. So, therefore, uh, we will first use the um, uh, Chebyshev's inequality and then uh, compute uh, through the this an estimate of n and then uh, through the central limit theorem also. Yes, so um, applying the Chebyshev's inequality because uh, expected value of s n upon n is p and variance of s n upon n is p into 1 minus p by n. So, therefore, uh, by the Chebyshev's inequality probability that s n minus n minus p in absolute value is greater than or equal to t. So, this is less than or equal to expectation of this square divided by t square. In other words, the variance of s n upon n. So, the variance of s n upon n is p into 1 minus p by n. So, therefore, uh, by Chebyshev's inequality we get this estimate and uh, here again <coughs> we are applying the same logic. So, I hope that uh, you can easily see that the maximum value, because if you have 0 less than p less than 1, we are um, in the uh, earlier this thing also I used the fact that max of p 1 minus p is equal to 1 by 4. Uh, you can easily check, I mean okay, let us just spend a minute and try to see that means, this is a function of p and I can find out the derivative. So, the derivative would be uh, 1 minus p, uh, 1 minus p by 2, right. And so, this is I put this equal to 0. So, that gives me um, uh, p equal to, uh, I am sorry, this is 2 p, because minus p square. So, the derivative is minus 2 p. So, this implies that p is half certainly uh, p cannot be 2, because p is lying between. So, this is a critical value and to uh, make sure that this gives you the maximum value, the second derivative that means, the second uh, if, I, if I call um, um, if I am saying f p is uh, p into 1 minus p, then uh, f prime p when you put 0 gives you p equal to half and f double prime p is equal to minus 2, which is less than 0. So, that means, the critical value that we have obtained will be the maximizing value. And you, so, you see p equal to half gives you the maximum of this and you can also prove this by concavity and so on. Anyway, so uh, therefore, um, this is less than this um, I mean here and if I am putting the maximum value, the obviously, this equality will convert to inequality. So, is less than or equal to this. So, 1 by 4 n t square. Right? and um, this should be equal to 0 0.01. So, we get the estimate for n, maybe I should uh, put this something like this 1 upon 4. Um, so, your n will be equal to uh, 1 upon 4 uh, t square into 0 0.01. 
which is 25 by t square. So, this is your Chebyshev's estimate of uh, this uh, probability, I mean uh, for the value of n for which this probability would be less than or equal to 0 0.01. Right. Now, let us try to apply the uh, uh, central limit theorem and uh, the central limit theorem uh, says that uh, this variate when you take S n by n minus p divided by the standard deviation, which is p into 1 minus p by n. right? So, you divide by that. So, root n goes upstairs and this is stand, this is approximately a normal a standard normal. right? Uh, for large enough n, I can say that this is approximately this. So, uh, now you want to compute this probability greater than or equal to t and um, uh, here again, I will write this as um, so, I am standardizing it and therefore, uh, dividing it by dividing the whole thing by the uh, standard deviation. So, that uh, gives me the uh, right hand side as root n t upon under root p 1 minus p. Okay. So, here again because this is greater remember. So, then if I put the uh, maximum value uh, as again I had argued earlier, this becomes a smaller uh, interval and therefore, uh, oh I should have said I think we have uh, missed out on the uh, stand here yeah, this thing sorry uh, the absolute value right and here also it should be the absolute value fine so uh, the standard so the interval as i said if you put the maximum value here then this becomes smallest and so the interval is smallest so if the probability is um, and then we are wanting the so for a larger interval the probability would be higher so therefore if i'm taking the smaller interval the probability i'm wanting to be uh, what was our uh, this thing? Uh, the problem that this, uh, the problem stated was that this should be less than or equal to 0 0.01. Okay, so if I'm saying that uh, uh, this should be greater, and so here, uh, if I'm writing the maximum value, so what will it be? That means I'm wanting the mod z to be greater than or equal to z naught. And if I am taking the smallest value here, so that means uh, if this is your 0, then you are asking for <coughs> yes. So, you are asking for this probability and this probability to be less than or equal to this. Now, if I am uh, uh, taking the uh, minimum value here, that means I am putting the maximum value here, then obviously uh, you will be taking larger area. So, therefore, uh, the value of n which satisfies uh, for maximum value here will satisfy for all values of p. right? Okay, so, this is the idea. Now, let us see. So, this greater than or equal to. So, therefore, I am substituting 1 by 4 for p into 1 minus p, which gives me half and so that becomes makes it 2 root uh, n t. Right. So, it is just the same argument you draw the figure and you can verify for yourself. So, now, um, you see this is greater than or equal to 2 root n t. So, let me just uh, show you the uh, details here. That means, we are asking for probability z greater than or equal to z naught, right, which is uh, the same as probability z greater than z naught union probability z less than minus z naught. Right. This is the absolute value as I said z greater than z naught and z less than minus z naught. Right. Now, these are uh, uh, disjoint events. So, therefore, I can write the uh, probability of the union as the sum of the probabilities. So, this will be probability z greater than z naught plus probability z less than minus z naught. Okay. And so, um, this becomes 1 minus probability z less than or equal to z naught and uh, probability z less than minus z naught. See, um, here again I can just uh, show you the. So, uh, that means, if you have your uh, so, if you are wanting z less than this is minus z naught, you are wanting this probability, but that is the same if you write z naught here, this is the same as this probability. right? So, therefore, a probability z less than minus z naught is 1 minus of probability z less than z naught. So, z less than z naught is this whole probability. So, from 1 minus I will get this, which is equal to probability z less than minus z naught and therefore, I get this. So, this is 2 minus twice probability z less than or equal to z naught, where z is your standard normal variant. Okay. And so, um, 
So, the same thing I have used here, right. Okay. This is your z naught. So, this whole probability is 2 minus twice phi 2 under root n t, which should be equal to 0 0.01. So, like we are finding the value of n for which this will be equal and then higher values of n, this will always be less than 0 0.01. Okay. And so, uh, this is 0 0.01, therefore, uh, this tells me that uh, phi 2 root n t, uh, right, if you bring this to this side and this here, uh, is something wrong. Okay. So, you bring this to this side and take this to this side. So, it will be 1.99 divided by 2, which is 0 0.995. And so, you look up the standard normal tables and corresponding to this uh, probability, the corresponding value of the variate is uh, 2.57. So, from the normal tables, I get that when um, this number is 2.57, the corresponding normal probability from minus infinity to 2.57 is 0.995. Okay. So, therefore, this gives me root n as 2.57 upon 2 t. So, the number by the central limit theorem, the estimate and therefore, uh, this implies that your n is 2.57 upon 2 t whole square. Right. So, um, this is our uh, central limit uh, uh, estimate and that is our Chebyshev's inequality uh, estimate. Now, if you uh, the want uh, the uh, third part of the question is compare the results for t equal to 0 0.01. So, um, for t equal to 0 0.01, uh, the Chebyshev's inequality gives you a number a value of n which is 2500,000. That means, 250,000. 250,000, whereas the central limit theorem will only ask for this many sample values. So, if you want to, um, you know, estimate the, you get the sample size such that uh, S n upon n uh, differs from P in absolute value uh, by, uh, you know, this difference. So, that means, the probability that this is greater than or equal to t is less than 0.01. Uh, so, that number for central limit theorem is much, much smaller compared to the uh, Chebyshev's inequality. So, this was another aspect of uh, central limit theorem, which I thought you should uh, have a look at. Okay. Um, then, um, another, uh, another usage of uh, central limit theorem is to how we approximate the chi square distribution for large values of n because you see somebody has already done the calculations for the central limit theorem for the for the sorry for the normal variate standard normal variate. So, we can um, make use of those tables to compute um, uh, chi square distribution large values you know for when, when the uh, n is large. So, the idea here is that uh, if you take x 1, x 2, x n are again identically independently distributed random variables, each is chi square 1. So, this implies that expectation of x i is 1 and variance of x i is 2. right? And um, then also we know from the reproductive property of chi square. In fact, um, uh, through the through the joint m g f also we can show and even otherwise we have seen that. Uh, uh, because each of them is independent identically distributed uh, chi square. So, x 1 plus x 2 plus x n will be chi square n. Right. Through uh, this is uh, we have already uh, seen it in one way uh, that this uh, when you sum up these independent identically distributed random variable. So, chi square has the re reproductive property. So, uh, this sum s n is chi square n. And later on, we will also show through uh, use of m g f, how quickly you can say that uh, this sum will be chi square n, if each is chi square 1. Right. So, anyway, now, so by CLT theorem, S n minus n upon root 2 n uh, in distribution, because we have standardized it, right, uh, subtracting the mean of S n. So, S n will be, uh, the mean of S n will be n, because each is chi square 1. So, therefore, this is minus n upon root 2 n that will go in distribution to uh, 0 uh, normal 0 1 right as n goes to infinity. So, or in other words chi square is uh, uh, the mean n normal approximately you can say mean uh, n and uh, the mean n and variance 2 n. So, this is a normal you know, whichever way you want to put it. So, therefore, um, you want to compute this probability. 
remember for large n you want to be able to compute these probabilities uh, using the normal tables. So, therefore, uh, when I standardize uh, this will be s n minus n under root root 2 n. So, this will be become a minus n upon under root 2 n, right, which is the uh, value phi of a minus n upon root 2 n. So, therefore, uh, when n is large, I can the central limit theorem will give me a good approximation. And so, for large n, this will be a standard normal uh, close to a standard normal variate. And therefore, uh, I can compute this probability uh, for large chi square n uh, by uh, uh, the normal uh, standard normal table. So, now, I, I said I will uh, show you um, how we can approximate uh, the uh, chi square probabilities uh, using central limit theorem. So, let n be 100 <coughs> and we wish to. So, I had shown you that uh, you know the formula, I gave you the formula that means, you can uh, standardize the <coughs> chi square uh, uh, random variable and uh, use by using the central limit theorem, you can get the probability. So, let us compare the values for n equal to 100. right? And um, we, we so we want to approximate a uh, so that chi square 100 less than or equal to a the probability that chi square 100 is less than or equal to a is equal to 0.95, right? So um, by using the central limit theorem, right? And so central limit theorem said that uh, this can be converted to see right 5 so chi square 100 minus the mean is 100 divided by uh, variance is 200. So, under root 200. So, that becomes phi of a minus 100 upon under root 200. So, this will be approximately uh, because we are saying uh, and let us see how uh, if uh, n equal to 100 how good I mean, is it large enough for a good approximation. So, if you put this equal to 0 0.95 <coughs> then, uh, by the standard normal tables, uh, the 0 0.95 probability corresponds to this value being equal to 1.645. Okay. So, therefore, uh, you equate these two numbers and that gives you a equal to 100 plus under root 200 into 1.645 and that comes out to be uh, 123.2638. Okay. So, using the central limit theorem and then we just standardize uh, this variate um, right? and uh, then we said that if n is large enough, this must be approximately normal 0 1 and so from there I get uh, this probability. Now, from the tables for uh, chi square 100, if you compute the exact value, uh, then uh, exact value of a that comes out to be 124.342. So, you can see that uh, the approximation is really very, very good and this is for n equal to 100. So, the point we are making is that you know if, if your n is larger, you will get a better approximation uh, better than this, even the difference will be uh, uh, only at the decimal places. And so, uh, you can do, uh, you can use your standard normal uh, tables for computing these probabilities. So, this was uh, one another point that I wanted to make about use, uh, using central limit theorem results. So, now, uh, Another um, application of uh, uh, central limit theorem. The question is, um, if x 1, x 2, x n uh, again are identically uh, independently distributed random variables and you are given that uh, expectation of each variable is uh, mu and the variance is uh, sigma square and also uh, that the expectation of x i minus mu raised to power 4 is sigma square plus 1, so which is less than infinity, right? because sigma you are taking to be a finite number. So, the first question is, uh, does the weak law of large numbers hold for uh, x 1 square, x 2 square, x n, I mean the sequence, sequence of square of the random variables. And the second question is to find the limit of this probability, okay, where x 1 minus mu whole square plus x n minus mu whole square divided by n. So, we are talking in terms of the squared random variables. So, um, because the central limit, the weak law of large numbers holds for x 1, x 2, x n, because your variance and mean are finite. So, now the question is that uh, is the, uh, does the weak law of large numbers hold for uh, x 1 square, x 2 square and so on, the sequence of squared random variables. So, therefore, we need to um, uh, 
to for the for the uh, for answering uh, part a i need to say that the variance of eg xi squares is finite right and uh, for this i have just made this calculation uh, that you know if you if you open up this uh, expectation of xi minus mu raised to 4 because that's what you're given as uh, sigma 4 plus 1 so um, uh, yes and uh, we missed this point that uh, for the weak law of large numbers, I need to say that uh, these x i squares are identically independently distributed and they have finite uh, variance. So, now we have done enough of uh, this, this thing to say that if x 1, x 2, x n are identically distributed, then obviously, uh, x i squares are also identically distributed. Right? This much uh, of uh, uh, probability theory we have done so far and then that they would be uh, independent can also will also follow right because if x1 x2 xn are independent then uh, these will also be independent so i'm sure you can work it out uh, by all that we have done in the course by now okay and now uh, to show that the variances of uh, these xi squares are uh, finite which will be the same so i've just uh, done this exercise and surely there may be other ways of doing it also showing that the variance is finite so anyway i just opened up uh, this expression uh, you know uh, then then i took ex, uh, expectation inside and you can see that um, uh, here uh, for example expectation xi cube then into mu and then when you get 6 x i square. Now, expectation of x i square I know, which is sigma square plus mu square, right, because that is already given to me. And then there is expectation x i is mu. So, therefore, uh, this is what you get mu 4 minus 4 mu 4 plus mu 4 and here it is 6 times sigma square plus mu square into mu square. right? And uh, then um, uh, you can uh, write down this thing here. and. Uh, this then tells me, see for example, here uh, this is 3 mu 4, uh, because this is 6 mu 4 minus 4 mu 4 plus mu raised to 4. So, that is t 3 mu 4 and this is c sigma square mu square. So, yeah, you get something that means these two uh, the, uh, expectation of x i raised to 4 minus 4 times mu x i cube, this is equal to a finite number and therefore, uh, we can conclude that both are finite. right? and so uh, weak law of large numbers can be applied. So, therefore, I needed this condition uh, if the x i's are identically independently distributed and if the fourth power expectation about the mean is finite, then the weak law of large numbers can be applied. Okay. And now, this probability um, we just need to again standardize our this thing. So, summation i varying from 1 to n summation i varying from 1 to n sigma x y x i square whole square. Now, variance of um, x i minus mu whole square summation of variance of each x i. I mean, when you want to compute the variance of x i minus mu whole square, then you are looking for, uh, uh, yeah, I, should, I should have said this is a uh, variance of x i minus that is ok, variance of x i minus mu whole square and expectation of x i minus mu raised to 4 minus expectation of x i minus mu whole square whole square right, this expectation squared. Right. So, which now since we are given this number which is sigma 4 plus 1 and this this is uh, expectation x i minus mu whole square is variance of x i which is sigma square. So, raise to 2 will be minus sigma 4. So, the variance of each of this x i minus mu whole square is 1 right and therefore, uh, variance of uh, summation i varying from 1 to n x i minus mu maybe I can rewrite this uh, nicely. So, that it is readable. So, then what we are saying is that variance summation x i minus mu whole square i varying from 1 to n, this is equal to n, because each of them has variance 1. So, by central limit theorem, um, this summation i varying from 1 to n minus sigma square divided by root n, right? because each had a variance sigma square, mean of x i minus mu whole square is sigma square. So, then n sigma square divided by n, so mean is sigma square divided by root n. Right? 
So, this goes to n 0 1 in uh, distribution as n goes to infinity and therefore, the required probability um, yeah. So, therefore, I have divided by uh, this thing uh, here uh, we are doing this and uh, yes root n if you want to write this as uh -huh, I can just multiply by root n throughout uh, something is uh, you are wanting this to be less than or equal to 1. Uh, I am making it uh, x i minus mu whole square n minus sigma square and then you are dividing by n by root n. the uh, required this thing we are look looking for 1 by root n. Mm. So, um, a variance x i minus uh, again this is summation uh, variance summation x i minus mu whole square uh, uh, whole square divided by n will be uh, n upon n square which is 1 by n. So, therefore, you will divide by 1 by root n. 1 by root n and so that uh, you know if I bring 1 by root n here in the denominator then this becomes 1. So, therefore, uh, because this goes to standard normal uh, this whole thing as n goes to infinity. So, this required probability see absolute this less than or equal to I have divided by 1 by root n. So, this becomes less than or equal to 1. So, this is twice phi 1 minus 1. We have already done this so many times in the absolute values. So, this is 2 phi of 1 minus 1 and again from the standard normal tables this is 0 0.8413. So, this number. So, therefore, 2 into 0 0.8413 minus 1 and that comes out to be this. So, uh, integrate probabilities and so on one I mean they are the results you know there is no end to the results and I will try to uh, I mean I think I will continue with the discussion on the central limit theorem uh, in the next lecture also.